Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about what do we do when progressive overload stops progressing. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, work on skilling up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. Because it is universally understood by everyone other than a few kooky bodybuilders and um, people who want to promote nonsense. It's generally understood in the entire strength and conditioning world that a bigger muscle is a stronger muscle. That progressive overload, progressive tension, it's not just about weight moved, it is about tension on the muscles, is the key to causing muscles to grow. In other words, if you're using the same form and range of motion, you're going to have bigger pecs, front delts, and triceps when you can bench press 225 for 5 to 8 reps and when you were benching 95 pounds for 5 to 8 reps. And I don't think anyone disagrees with that. If you don't believe me, Go start at the gym and you take measurements of when you were doing your rep work with 95 pounds on the bench. And trust me, when you get to 225, when you've added well over 100 pounds to your work sets, all those muscles will be visibly bigger to everyone who sees you, even if you don't see it yourself. This is not subject to debate, and it shouldn't even be subject to, to anecdote trying to disprove it. Uh, everyone knows this. By that same token, when you also get to where you can do rep work with 315, your chest and triceps are going to be bigger than they were when you were doing 225 for 5 to 8 reps. Trust me on this. Now, the problem we run into is that we stall. You can't always just use straight linear progression. Novices, novice lifters can use straight linear progression. They can come in and do three sets of five, five sets of five, three sets of eight, whatever they're trying to do, and they can just keep adding weight for months and months and months on end. The beauty of new gains, the beauty of being a novice, you can make a linear progression. Uh, and you can usually sustain that for quite a while, uh, usually anywhere from about three up to about nine months, particularly when you start doing some weight resets and everything and back off a little bit. And usually what we do beyond that, we just look at adding more reps. Usually that's the next solution uh, to this problem. Like when you when you can't really do that anymore, what's another thing that really, really works? It's very old school. I think uh, Sean, I did a video on him the other day, uh, and I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name. I'm going to dodge that one. Uh, Sean talked about that. It's something I've talked about in the past. So that's a normal standard way because that's still basic progressive overload, right? You're doing more tonnage in the same set. If, if you're stuck a little bit and you can't really seem to add much weight uh, with, let's say you're using 185 pounds on an exercise and you've been doing sets of five, right? Um, usually your options are either micro load from there if you're stalling, meaning you get the little micro plates. You can do little half pound micro loads and that actually does work. For those who don't mind slow progress, you might not even need this other stuff. Sometimes micro loading with micro plates can go a long, long way with all this. Um, but failing that, you just try to add reps. So if, if you've been doing sets of five with 185, try to get a sixth rep somewhere, right? Then get to where you're doing like your three sets of six and then see if you can add a seventh rep and then an eighth rep. And then maybe when you can do three sets of eight, you add weight, drop it back down and do sets of fives again. Uh, but that's still basic progressive overload, isn't it? Because we haven't really increased um, anything other than just the work we're doing in a single set. Well, that, that produces a very, very similar growth response uh, to being able to add weight because we're, we're micro-loading within the same set. That's what we're doing. And so your, your real volume, other than the tonnage aspect of it, hasn't really particularly increased. We're still working uh, with the same thing, and that's still considered to be uh, a very standard form of progressive overload. If you can add reps, you're getting stronger. You're gaining, you're gaining muscle and strength. All right, that's understood also. If you can do more reps with the same weight, you're making progress. That also means that your one rep max is going to go up because... Let's say you've been able to do sets of five with 185, but you get strong enough to where you can do seven or eight reps with 185, I promise you your max is gonna go up on that lift. It has gone up on that lift and your work capacity has increased on it and you've gained muscle and strength. You're, getting, you're stronger now. But what happens when that doesn't work? Because that's what can happen to us oftentimes is we get more advanced, we plateau, and we start finding that we can't add reps. We are stuck at three sets of five with 315 on this exercise and it is not budging. We can't get a sixth rep. We try to micro load and when we go to 317 and a half we only get four reps on the, the, the third set. Right? And when we add a little micro plates we start petering out near the end. We can't even do the three by five anymore. 
Uh, we're getting plenty of food. We're getting plenty of sleep. What do you do at this point? Um, in, in that case, either you accept that your gains have slowed down, but if you feel like you need to force additional gains, this is where volume comes into play. This is where you add volume. Now, if you're running a periodized program already, that's usually accounted for, but a lot of people don't want to run those sort of pre-written structured programs, and I get that. Uh, I write plenty of those, but I don't necessarily like to do them myself. So what do we do now? Well, we need to add sets. And I think that that's a very, very effective method. Um, and so let, let's say that we're doing our press, right? And you're doing uh, 155 for three sets of five, right? And that's where you're at on your strict press. And you realize that this, this lift really needs to go up. It's stalled. It's an important lift to you. You want bigger shoulders. You want, it, you want that manly, strong press. You want to be able to press, you know, 225. You're trying to get up to that max of that. You want, and you want the shoulders and everything that go with it. But it's stuck, and it's been stuck there for six weeks. That's where you need to start adding sets. Maybe you're doing it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We look in on Friday and say, okay, I know I'm going to have extra recovery over the weekend because I'm doing this lift three days a week. Um, maybe I should add a set. Add a set. Take a nice long break because let's say that 3 by 5 has really, really been pushing you with that 155. See if you can add a fourth set come Friday. Even if that means taking a five-minute break between that last set because you might have to do that. Get that extra set in. Well, what if you're really, really struggling with that extra set? Maybe take five pounds off. Maybe go ahead and instead of doing the 155, maybe drop to 150 and see if you can get five sets of five. Right? See if you can get that five sets of five on that Friday. Add a little bit of volume. Try to squeeze in an extra set or two. Sometimes that means might mean that we need a little tiny decrease, even a 2%, 3% reduction on the weight in the bar. Sometimes you have to do that to get the extra volume in. But there is a threshold to where uh, there's going to be periods of time to where we can no longer add weight, even with the microplates, without losing a rep off the back end, right? Because we're at our limits, uh, to where we've done weight resets. You know, we've done weight resets to where we stalled, reduced the weight, and built back up, and we keep hitting that same wall. You know, you keep hitting that wall to where that 155 or 3 by 5 is the best you can get. And when you go to 157 and a half, you can't get the fifth rep on the third set anymore. You can only do four. And so you're at that complete wall. You've done multiple resets. That's the point where you look at it and say, okay, I'm going to have to add some volume in. Right? You're going to have to do more total sets of that exercise. Uh, a lot of people would also say this is where we would throw an accessory movement in, and I don't disagree with that, but isn't that just more volume? Right? Some guys would be like, well, you could do some standing dumbbell presses. Well, you're just adding extra sets, really, to a similar movement uh, that's going to have uh, quite a bit of carryover. You're still just adding volume at that point. It, it's, it's not really that different. You know, just like we might do a closed grip floor press uh, as an accessory movement to our closed grip bench press, right? It's, it's a very similar move pattern. All you've done is add volume in the form of an accessory. But you're essentially just doing a variation of the main lift, but you're just doing more volume. You're, you're adding additional workload uh, to hopefully facilitate a little bit of additional hypertrophy in those areas to get you moving again, to break up that staleness, to push through that plateau. Um, and, and this is stuff that we have to do. And that is, in my opinion, that is where volume really has its place in training. Uh, when we can no longer progress with the, the most basic forms of progressive overload that's either adding weight to the bar or adding a rep when well, we can't do that anymore there that is where volume really really works well uh, and in fact you will probably find when you've reached that threshold when you start increasing the volume within a few weeks usually that lift will start going up again you will start gaining new muscle you will see new progress, you'll see new gains, and then you don't have to keep adding the volume forever. That's the beauty of progressive overload. We can then sometimes, we can bring that volume up, then we can bring that volume back down and start adding tension again, right? It's an ebb and flow to these things, but it, it is a fantastic plateau breaker. It really is. It works beautifully well at that point, uh, particularly if your volume has been moderate, uh, moderate amounts of volume or even slightly low volume and you add volume in to break through a plateau, uh, it will work wonders sometimes. It, it absolutely can fix this problem. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. 
and I will talk to you guys next time.